Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just going back and looking at the film, our, our guys played really hard, played really well, um, played physical, really good environment. Um, pleased with us, the way we handled the adversity, um, whether it was being down early to then getting the lead to then losing the lead and finding a way um, to come back with a big strike and, and get the touchdown and then uh, um, to be able to hold them on defense. It was a, um, a collective effort by everybody. And we played a lot of guys. That was the other thing that uh, we looked at. We played well over 60 guys, which you take 70 on a trip, it's great that uh, that many people are having a, a factor in the game, whether it's OD or special teams. And uh, um, we still have some work to do. We've got to continue to improve. Uh, we're at the halfway point and uh, – uh, excited about where we're at, but we've got a lot, a lot of stuff to do, and we we've got to we've got to be better this week. We're playing a really really good West Virginia team that I've got tons of respect for, for Neil and what he's done, and and he and I are on the same time frame of of being hired at the same time. We're on the board of trustees together and and, and know him well, and and uh, he's doing a really good job down there. Any update on some of those injuries? Um, nobody's ruled out, which is good. Uh, I don't think many will. Uh, practice today, um, but nobody is, has been ruled out. Um, we uh, probably got better news on, on a couple of the guys, but uh, probably closer to Wednesday before we know. But I, I anticipate everybody having a really good shot to play. And how did Avery grow from this experience, kind of playing through an injury? Uh, in the fact that uh, a couple things, he grew in a, in a number of ways. One, uh, the injury was one thing. Uh, but then a, a flip in, in philosophies at halftime where we were doing a great job den denning them in the run game. And then in the second half, uh, they changed their defensive front and said, you know, we're going to put five guys up here. Uh, and we didn't have quarterback run like we talked about. Uh, and we had to make some plays in the pass game. And, um, you know, he made a great throw to, to Jace down the middle of the field one time. Uh, that um, sparked us to get that field goal. And then the, the, the plays late to hang in there. Um, he just got the ball off on the one to Jace and, and uh, uh, found the found the found maybe the mistake in coverage with, with DJ. So um, I, without a doubt that he keeps growing and getting better and keep, keeps learning from his experiences. You get to see DJ Giddens every day in practice. Are you still kind of amazed at how much progress this kid just keeps making and making? Yeah, and he practices the way you guys watch him play. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys where we try to give him a few breaks during the week, and he doesn't want them. He wants to stay out there. He wants uh, every rep he can get. And uh, um, he runs with great patience as well as with physicality. And uh, as everybody's seen, he has the ability to make people miss in the hole as well as outside on the perimeter. And, uh, he's playing at, at such a high level and, and excited to see him maybe start to finally get some of the respect he deserves. Maybe it got lost in the shuffle on Saturday, but Taquan Roberson came in and you know really did a good job finishing off that drive for you as he rewatched that series. What did he what did he prove to you and guys? A uh, couple things, uh, and he was one of our players of the game afterwards. Uh, and I don't know if he played four plays, six plays, somewhere in there. The first thing was the noise. You know, he came in at a time where it was it was cranked up really loud, and we were driving, and he was able to handle the noise. I think we we made one mistake, um, uh, but uh, he handled the noise. Didn't have any problem with the, with the cadence. Uh, and then uh, I thought he threw a strike. I think it was to Jace uh, on a, on an outbreaking cut, um, and um, you could tell he'd played a lot of football. I think that was the thing that that um, we were excited to see as his experience showed up, playing as much football as he had. Jacob had gotten uh, banged up um, like on Tuesday or Wednesday of last week uh, and wasn't able to make the trip. Uh, Knuth wasn't. So uh, that gave Taekwon many more reps because we really have been splitting those two reps all season. And then Jacob got nicked up. I think it was Wednesday before our team periods. So then Taekwon took all the reps of, te of, of team with the twos on Wednesday and Thursday, and we had the noise cranked up pretty pretty good there. So I think he felt pretty comfortable going in there. Really happy for him. And Jace obviously had the big game, but he's been building to this for a while. What, what do you like the most about what he's giving you right Just now? Just the confidence in which he's playing uh, and, and how fast he's playing. 
um, and you know we're we're putting him in different spots and uh, in, in playing him you know in 12 personnel and 11 personnel and moving him around and uh, he's playing with a lot of confidence and those two obviously have a really good chemistry. Colorado, you have to defend the pass all game. Now you're going to get up against a team that loves to run it. What's the new challenge here this week? You hit it on the head. Um, they they run the ball and they and they run the ball really effectively with with three different players. You know, both tailbacks are really good and can beat you inside or outside. And they, and they're two maybe different size backs, but they both they both run inside. They both run outside, and then. Green's one of you know, he's one of my favorite kids to watch play. Now I don't know if I'm gonna really like watch him on Saturday night, but he's he's a competitor and um, he makes plays. He makes plays with his arm. He makes plays with his legs. Um, not afraid to to uh, to run inside. He'll you know, he'll cut back. He's not gonna run out of bounds or slide very often. Um, been impressed with him. I think maybe was his first start against us in 22, uh, somewhere around there. And I was impressed with him then. And then, you know, I think he's taken probably about every snap since then. And um, I know that uh, uh, Neil has been really impressed with him. And you can tell um, his energy uh, sparks their team. What does West Virginia do on defense? Uh, it's been some of the things that we've seen in the past from them. Uh, they're going to be some three down. They're going to be some four down. They're, even their three down, they may have an overhang guy. Um, they're going to pressure you. I think they're really disruptive up front. I think they're really uh, physical. Um, they, they get up field. They've got a guy that I think leads the country in TFLs. And so they're not just reading and reacting. They're penetrating defensive line um, and just starting to get into watch of some of the coverage things that they're doing because I've spent some time on the other side of the ball. But uh, um, a lot of veteran guys, and that's that's the thing that you see now with uh, – transfer portal and kids coming back. I mean, every every team seems to have a lot of older players. You mentioned Nick Hendry's performance after the game yep. and him having to come in uh, after the injuries. Uh, what did you see on film after rewatching it that stood out to you? And, and were there any other uh, backup guys on defense that stood out? Yeah, um, I, I just, Nick Hendry's been in our system. You know, he's he was banged up his first year, got a chance to play a little bit last year, and he, so he's – he understands what we're doing, and so he didn't miss a beat in that respect of, of just knowing where he's supposed to be. Uh, he's playing faster, um, and I thought he did a really good job. Zayshon Rich played a, a much more significant role for us. Um, some of that was by design and planned um, that that he has made those kind of strides, and some of that um, – uh, was the fact that um, you know Jacob got got banged up, and so he ended up getting more opportunities. Um, I think all those guys in the defensive line played really well. Uh, Mott really sticks out because he was so disruptive, and then a kid like Austin Romaine that um, you know is starting. Mike Backer leads the team or, or close to leading the team if he doesn't in, in tackles. Well, his role was reduced because of the the scheme. Um, but when he came in, man, did he have some impact plays and uh, didn't complain, didn't say, I wish I, you know, everybody wants to play. But when he had his opportunities in the plays he had, he was impactful. And that's, I think, a great thing for um, all of our guys to learn from that, you know, when, you're, when your opportunity comes and if, it, if it's a time to step back because of a different philosophy, a different scheme we're running, when you come in, you've got to be ready to go. And I thought Austin Romain made some really impactful plays. You talk. Obviously, oh. You obviously had the the long first drive coming out of halftime. How important was that? Looking back on it, and uh, how do you approach those drives coming straight out of half? Is it, I guess, fully scripted, or is it still sort no, of it's, just it's playing? No, it's not. We just flow? talk about some of the things that were the adjustments at halftime. But you know, we always talk about you know um, the the middle eight or the four over four, the ending four minutes of the first half where we were able to score and get a stop. Uh, against them, and then the first four minutes of the second half, which turned into an eight-minute drive. I thought, it, and that was part partly take one as well. I thought our guys just executed really well, and uh, when we execute at a high level, we're a really good football team. When we don't, and there was times on both sides of the ball that it was a lot of just technique errors that we've got to continue to clean up. That's why I, when I say we've got to get better, we've got to clean up a lot of our technique errors. You talked a lot about rush lane discipline and things yep. like that against some of these guys you've faced recently with Green, who seems to be more willing to mm -hmm. to tuck it and run. Does that does that change the approach there? 
Uh, it, it definitely changes the approach as far as your your choice or early down um, uh, thoughts as far as defensive ends. You can't get upfield as much because of uh, just the quarterback pure run game uh, and the design runs that they have to be more disciplined on. Uh, and even like last week, we were able to rush the passer a little bit more on early downs. Um, and, and try to keep uh, Sanders in the pocket. This this guy is going to scramble to run. He scrambles to throw it just as well. But uh, um, he, the design run is the big difference this week. Is the amount of design runs that they have for him, and he's he's really productive with the, with with the runs. And and you can see why he is because the tailbacks are are productive. And you've you've got three guys that really can beat you rush in the football. It's hard to uh, take one away. Um, and not get hurt by the other ones. We've got to be really balanced in, in our, our techniques up front as well as linebackers. I guess, uh, you know, Jim Moore at UConn described Taekwon as a guy that just brings a spark. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you notice that in him, or did you notice that in him immediately? Well, you know, he didn't get here till the till the summer, so it's learning our offense in the summer, learning it in fall camp. Um, I always thought he was a competitor. You can see that on the film when you watched him from time before of of seeing what kind of a competitor he is. And I thought he made people around him better. You could tell he was the the energy when he was at UConn. Um, And so for him to come in here knowing he's probably going to be behind a, a guy that's a really good player but continuing to push himself to learn what the heck we're doing and then you know, our quarterback room, Coach Wells does a phenomenal job with those guys. They're really close. You know, when you throw Knuth and, and Hud and, and Barnett in there, those guys are really close. And so I think Avery was excited for Taekwon to have that opportunity. And then when we gave him one of the hammers at the end of the game, you could tell people genuinely um, were – um, grateful and happy that he came in and performed because he works his butt off and uh, he's gotten to know our system. It's been great that now he's got six six weeks of games plus four weeks of fall camp. I think he felt really comfortable going in. And our guys felt comfortable when he went in the game. Welcome to the Big 12. You got one road game in a different time zone, another road yep. game in a different time zone, and now West Virginia in a different time zone. Yep. Do you feel like the team and the guys are kind of getting acclimated in any way to this? Uh, I think our routines are getting acclimated. It, it, you know, the benefit of of playing the the late the late slots or the evening slots is the amount of time we get from the end of practice on Thursday up until game time. Whether it's last minute adjustments to uh, some walkthrough time to probably most importantly the recovery time of our guys getting a chance to. Uh, to get their bodies back. The negative of it is we've got to catch these guys up on on, on their sleep at some point. Um, you know, and and today we have lifting times, but we had them spread out throughout the day rather than just having a morning lift. And and uh, some guys are in there now. Some guys don't show up till one o'clock to get their lift in, so that they can get their rest. A lot of kids, uh, especially the older ones, are either um, limited class schedules or or can do a lot of things online. So that's the biggest thing with these late games is is getting the guys' bodies back and 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 utilizing that time. Um, uh, really efficiently from the end of Thursday to kickoff. When you think of a Neil Brown coach team, what are some hallmarks or some pillars of his teams? 100% toughness. Uh, I mean, 100% toughness and uh, mentally tough as well as physically tough, you know, and um, really disciplined teams that uh, play the game the right way. They play hard. Neil's had a ton of success. Um, uh, Happy for him. Um, And... um, you know, it's it's a tough atmosphere to go into. We know that in, in West Virginia. We know it's a really good atmosphere, and, and it's really good football down there. And, and they're, they're going to give us everything, just like we've got it. Every week is a different battle in the Big 12. And it doesn't matter if it's home. doesn't matter if it's away. You cannot be seduced by success. If you get seduced by success, you are going to get knocked off. Enjoy that win for the – Usually it's 24 hours. It got down to about 12 hours this time, uh, and now it's time to get back to work. And so uh, I'm excited. It will be the first time we see our guys here at 2:40, and uh, um, kind of just hit reset and go again. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Zayshon. Obviously, he's very athletic and has played his way into a role there. 
but with that said, has he surprised you at how quickly he's picked up things and what is he specifically doing really well right now? Um, y- yes, I am surprised and, and pleased because we knew we needed to have somebody step up uh, when Kanigel had gotten injured and we had to shelve Kanigel, that somebody had to come come to the forefront, and he really has. Part of his confidence has been gained on special teams. He's been really impactful uh, as a guy that's blocking the, the gunners on, on on punt return to a guy that's, that's one of them on punt to making some big-time plays on kickoff. And our kick re- kickoff coverage team has been better because of guys like Zayshon Rich and Rex Van Wy and Jordan Allen, guys that, that – that everybody kind of knows about, but their roles have been really significant. And when you have that success uh, and you see it on teams, it just takes a little time. You're like, hey, I'm ready for this next phase and next role. And, and uh, um, you know, he's a big physical corner that can really run. That's the thing that we're excited about Zayshon is he has the size um, and he's learning the game, especially with what we do defensively. And, and uh, um, he's going to continue to get more reps and continue to improve. How impressed were you with the way Dylan played and handled the situation? Really impressed. Uh, I thought he played. I thought he played with an edge, um, and he played with confidence. But it never crossed the line, and he always in, was in total control. But he wasn't going to back down, and that's what I so appreciated about uh, his effort. Is he was going at it, and um, I know he's got a lot of good friends on that team. It was really cool for us to get him into the end zone because we thought he scored on the one play and and then we were able to it wasn't and so we kept him in the game and gave him the the rush for a touchdown and uh, I thought uh, um, he was a spark for us too I thought that was a huge spark for our team to see um, Dylan play with the the confidence and the swagger uh, that he did and and uh, I think a lot of our guys saw a great side of Dylan that um uh, we know is there, and we're going to continue to give him opportunities. Excuse me. One final question, and it's about the offensive line. I'm, this is probably difficult to answer, but from that first week to now, and just the playing together, yeah. how, can you describe how yeah. much they've improved? Yeah, you hit it on the head. It's playing together. It's chemistry. Those are the things that um, when you have guys that haven't played together, even though they've been in the program they got to play as one. They absolutely have to play as one, and it takes time. And uh, I think that a, a guy that is is playing really well that we don't talk enough about is Sam Hecht. And uh, uh, Sam is – is we know he's a really good player, and he, he backed up Gilly last year, and he just needed an opportunity. He doesn't say a whole lot, but he speaks with his actions on the field, and he's playing at a really high level. I thought Kilty played one of his best games. Um, and and those and those older guys have been really steady, and those guys collectively playing together has really been good. Coach Devon Rice had a nice return yep. for you guys. What what do you like out of him in the kickoff role, and what what how has he grown? Um, he's got a great he's got great speed. He's got great uh, acceleration. Uh, we saw that on, on one of our returns that that uh, he was able to hit it, um, and. He's he can catch the ball. We we knew they weren't going to kick the ball to Dylan. They, they they weren't going to do that. So we needed to have a guy back there. Keegan was banged up. We didn't really want to put Jace back there um, because of his role that was gonna was gonna happen. So he was kind of the next man up. And um, we also know we had not played him a game yet. He's he's a red shirt candidate. So he's played a game. We'll be smart based on based on how much more we can use him if if we're gonna you know. Just play him those four and then anything extra after that. And staying on special teams, it seems like Simon has really settled in pretty yeah. well at punter. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad you, you brought him up. I, I thought Simon played one of his best games. He he mishit the first punt a little bit, um, but then he punted the ball really well uh, after that uh, against really good returners, forced some fair catches with hang time, and he's become a weapon on kickoff. Um, for him to be able to bang it out of the end zone, how much that has helped us uh, as well as when he kicks it one, two yards deep and we're playing really well on kick coverage. We've had more tackles inside the 20 this year than we probably have had the last couple of years. But with his emergence, how much better and more comfortable that's made Chris Tennant kicking field goals because he doesn't have to have that extra stress on his leg of having to bang a bunch of kickoffs out. And um, that was a huge kick. What was that, 40-some yarder, I think, 
that he hit, and and it it was dead middle and had and it was going up when it was going in, and I know there's altitude there, but that was a huge kick, and I think it's helped Chris by not having that on his plate. I think it was Brendan Mott said after the game that this team is reminding him a little bit of two years ago. You're now two and zero in one possession games. I think one and four last year. Yeah. Are you seeing some of those traits? Or? Well, I'm glad it's coming from them because it has to come from them, right? I mean, it has to come from within. It has to come from the player ownership. It has to come from uh, handling and, and attacking adversity that you face. And um, the only way you do that is by putting yourselves in the situation and coming out on top. And uh, um, you're not maybe always going to do that. But th the belief being there of we're going to find a way – um, it's fun to watch and fun to see because there was not any panic on the sideline um, after after they scored to, to go up. Uh, and we didn't need a field goal. We needed a touchdown, and we didn't have any panic. And um, we were able to, to make some plays, and that's that's fun to see. And then the defense go out there and get a stop. I mean, that those are, that's like I said, a, a collective team effort. When a backup quarterback has to come in the game, I guess in the middle of a drive as opposed to starting the drive, <laughs> Is there anything you say to him before he comes in, or with a guy like Take One, do you really have to say anything? I, I didn't get a chance to. We got a quarterback coach that, that handles that. I think the the key was uh, Avery was down, and you're able to get snaps. It'd be different if a kid ran off with an injury, and you're like, oh boy, you got to get out there. But Avery was truly down, and we were attending to him, and he was able to get with Sam Heck and get snaps. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but you're right. Sometimes. You know, it's like with a kicker, the less you say, the better. Um, they, they've Everybody's prepared for their moment. Now you got a good chance to go out and compete in that moment. And that's a, um, that's a sign of a, a mature guy like Taekwon is. I don't think anybody needed to give him any pep talk or rah-rah speech. He's a kid's a competitor. Coach, uh, one final thing for me. Uh, the band hosted a, a band festival all day Saturday, and yet there they were at 5 a.m. Dr. Trace and that – and. And the pride um, that was, uh, I, and and I'll talk to our team and our captains about that. That doesn't happen across the landscape of college football, and um, how excited the band was, and and community members were here too. I didn't see you, but there were community members here too <laughs> that were here at five fifteen, five thirty, and. Um, you know, to thank those guys, uh, we had the opportunity for our players to understand that this is something that is different. This is what makes K-State special. And, and I'd forgotten that they did host that uh, in the afternoon. So all the, all the more uh, we want to thank them. And, and to thank the band for, for what they did when we came back. And, guys, we had a ton of fans in Boulder. That was awesome to see. And um, when – when Jace caught that touchdown pass late and they erupted and I was like, we've got a great group there. And then to celebrate with the, the fan base afterwards was a lot of fun. So it's what makes K-State a special place.